Hi and welcome to this video and in this video we will look at a problem that most of us are facing and this is asked by Mukul. He says, hello sir, I'm able to understand the concept but while solving the questions, I'm not getting the right approach to solve the question but after seeing the answer, I feel that it is very easy to solve and that is a problem I believe you also are facing that I get stuck while solving but when I see the answers, it seems so simple. What do I do? What you need to do is to build your problem solving skill. And what is a problem solving skill? It is using skills creatively in new problems, using your mathematical skills creatively. Problem solving is a mathematical process. Let me explain this further. You have problem solving. What does that mean? You have information given to you and then you are asked to do something, a problem that you need to solve. The process that you need to follow from the, from the information to the final solution that is problem solving and you might have to use certain problem solving strategy. One other thing is to use a formula. In fact we believe that's the only thing that might work and we tend to remember the formula, try to apply the formula which will work in certain cases but you also need to understand there are also other strategies that you can use. You can make a table, you can, you can work backwards, you can probably look for patterns, you can use a process of elimination. You could simply draw and visualize. You could use manipulations or worse come to worse, take a guess and check. Yes, that is also a mathematical process. Let's look at a few examples. This is a question from CAT 2019's lot number one. The question says corners are cut off from an equilateral triangle T to produce a regular hexagon H. Then the ratio of the area of H to the area of T is what and four answer choices are given to you. Now you may want to look at the information that is given to us, what am I asked to do, the information given to us is the fact that we have an equilateral triangle and that got cut to produce a regular hexagon and what is asked is to find the ratio of the area of hexagon to that of the triangle. We might want to draw and visualize this problem to understand this problem slightly better. You can draw the equilateral triangle you can cut the corner and create a regular hexagon and there you have it. Now my question to you is that what strategy you want to look at? You want to work backwards, you want to use manipulation, you want to look for patterns, you want to have a process elimination, you want to use a formula, you want to guess and check or you want to make a table. What? What, what, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? You want to use a formula? So to use a formula you need to know the formula for the area of equilateral triangle and the formula of the area of regular hexagon. I hope you know that. Okay, let's get started. What are you thinking? Okay, you're going to look at that particular triangle on top and say the side is A. That's an equilateral triangle as well. So all those sides will be A, which means since it's a regular hexagon, all those sides will also be A. So now you're looking at this problem that we have the triangle, the bigger triangle has got a side 3A and a regular hexagon of side A. Okay, great. And this is what we are asked to do. Area of the regular hexagon with side A divided by area of equilateral triangle with side 3A. If you know the formula, you will apply the formula. Area of regular hexagon is 3 root 3 by 2 side square. Area of equilateral triangle is root 3 by 4 side square. Here the side for the uh, tri equilateral triangle is 3A. So in, uh, that, you, that you plug in there and I believe that we can manipulate that a bit and cut the A square, cut the root 3 and cut 1 3 with 3 squared in the denominator. There's a 2 1 4. We can cut all that. We can eventually get 1 by 3 by 2. 1 by 3 by 2 would make it 2 by 3. Very good. But would you consider other any of the other things that you want to use? Other problem solving strategies? What about guessing and checking? I mean, you are given four answer choices there and one of them is right. Other three are wrong. Can I simply make a guess? So after all, you're looking at a ratio of area. So what do you think, roughly, from the figure, what do you think would be the percentage would be? Do you think it's going to be very close to 80 percentage? Or it's, it's took something that is very close to about 60 percent? What do you think? If you look at the answer choices, answer choice number one is five is to six, that is five by six, which is 83 percentage. Three by four, answer choice number two is 75 percentage. Two by three is 66.66 percentage. Four by five is 80 percentage. Now you tell me that particular area looks 
what percentage does it look like an 83 percentage does it look like a 75 percentage does it look like a 66.6 percentage let's look at 80 percentage if you are a sensible human being i'm thinking probably you'll pick that that looks very close to about two-third now i know that this is a very dangerous approach to do okay but you can take sometimes you would probably you can take the risk and that is also a mathematical process by the way and that is also a problem solving strategy to use okay so you're not you're, you're not convinced you're almost going what okay but let's 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 look at it in a different way let's visualize and probably manipulate the figure a little bit can you think of looking at the hexagon and cutting down into smaller units how about that now immediately you see something very interesting here triangles 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All of them are of equal area. If that is the case, you see that the hexagon has got six of the small triangles and the big triangle has got all the nine ones. Hexagon has got the triangle number 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, and 8. And the bigger triangle has got everything. So the ratio simply becomes 6 is to 9, which is 2 is to 3, and there is your answer. And you would see that there is not just one approach to arrive at the answer. So in problem solving, what you have is that you have all these eight strategies that you can apply. When you look at a question, you want to look at what you think is something that is a workable strategy to start with. You might start with one particular approach. You may not reach somewhere else. You might want to uh, look another approach. All that is fine, but you will eventually want to use one of these eight strategies for solving a question. Let's look at this question from CAT 2004. Let's see what is that you want to use. We look at the information that is given. What am I asked to do? It says let y equal to 1 divided by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus. Looks like infinite series. That's your y. And you just simply have to find the value of y. So what are you thinking? What are you thinking? You want to use manipulations. Uh, you want to guess and check. You want to do process elimination. Those are the things that you're thinking. Okay, let me to think. Uh, let me know your thought process. What are you thinking first? You're saying that is less than one, which is correct, right? So y equal to one divided by some value. One divided by some value has to be a value which should be less than one. So your answer y must be less than one. So you can say that any answer choice which is greater than one would be wrong. And I can see two values there. Answer choice number one, root of 11 plus 3 divided by 2. That is definitely greater than 1. And answer choice number 3 says root of 15 plus 3 divided by 2. That is definitely greater than 1. Okay, now now you're stuck with 2 and 4. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Uh, you're going to do some approximation. Okay, fair enough. Let's approximate. You're approximating y uh, to be 1 divided by 2 plus 1 by 3, which is fair, which is fair. I think that is fair thing to do. So that is 1 by 2.3, 1 by 2 is 0.5, 1 by 3 is 0 0.3. You're saying that it should be roughly close to about 1.4. Okay, now all you have to do is look at an answer choice number 2, answer choice number 4, calculate that and figure out whether it's close to 1.4. What will you do? You're going to use the calculator. Smart boy, very good. Okay, so let's find out. So that turns out to be 0.43, answer choice number 4. And answer choice number 2 turns out to be 0.15. And then you can say for sure, 0.15 in that case is too small a value and 0.43 would be your answer to this particular question. Very good. And I'm sure that you can also use other strategies to arrive at the answer to the question. The important thing that you need to understand here is that marks are not given for steps. Marks are given for final answer. You can use whatever strategy that is possible. Very good. Let's look at this CAT 2019 slot 1 question. Immediately you see something. I don't have any option. This is a type in the answer question. And the question looks very ugly as well. Consider a function f of x plus y equals to f of x times f of y, where x and y are positive integers, and f of 1 equals to 2. Then it says if f of a plus 1 plus f of a plus 2 plus so on and so forth, plus f of a plus n equal to 16 times 2 to the power of n minus 1, then a is equal to what? Okay, let me know what are you thinking. What are you thinking? Let me know what are you thinking. Okay, you're saying that process elimination is not possible. Very good. I can't eliminate because I don't have any option there. What else? You think you can't think of a formula here. Okay, so you don't think the formula applies. Very good. Okay, what else? You don't think you can draw and visualize for this particular question. Okay, fair enough. So what else? They can't make a table. Oh, uh, okay. 
Okay, fair. So you're thinking that you're looking at working backwards, using manipulation, look for patterns, and you want to guess and check. Hmm, interesting. Okay, but you want to have a look at the question carefully. Okay, let's look at the question. What information that is given is that f of x plus y equal to f of x times f, f of y, and we are given f of 1 equals to 2. Good. And we have to find this thing in, in this in this now sort of an equation we have to find the value of a what are you thinking you want to look for pattern look for pattern that is good so you're given f of 1 equal to 2 let's just understand the function a little better okay that is a good thought right let's say I've got f of 1 uh, let's what pri probably will be the value of f of 2 what could be the value of f of 3 what could be the value of f of 4 can make sense of what this function is actually doing so it is given f of 1 equal to 2 now to look at f of 2 equal to what? How do I think? Now this is the information that is given to me that f of x plus y equals to f of x times f of y. So I have f of 2. Can I write 2 as something plus something? Yeah, I can write 2 as f of 1 plus 1. Now here f of x plus y, x is equal to 1, y equal to 1. Then you can convert that using that formula that is given there that f of 1 plus 1 equal to f of 1 times f of 1 and we know that f of 1 equal to 2 so 2 times 2 equals to 4 awesome awesome the what are you thinking f of 3 f of 3 and I think that we are getting some pattern f of 3 now can be written as f of 2 plus 1 that is interesting therefore I can write f of 2 plus 1 as f of 2 times f of 1 based on the formula that is given in the question. Now f of 2 I can see is 4, we already figured that out. f of 1 is 2, you see that is 8. Do you see a pattern? Do you see a pattern? You all, all, all can see, yes you did see or you seeing a pattern, you're seeing the pattern 2, 4, 8, 16, so you're thinking okay that's a pattern. f of 1 is 2, f of 2 is 4, f of 3 is 8, f of 4 is 16, f of 5 is 32, f of 6 is 64. Uh, interesting, interesting, very good and that makes a lot of sense in that red line that we uh, wrote there f of a plus 1 plus f of a plus 2 eventually is some 16 times 2 to the power of n minus 1 16 is 2 to the power of 4 so this this pattern looks good, looks good now what are you thinking, now what are you thinking now we'll have to figure out that one how are you, you going to think about that Ooh, okay, okay now you're looking at that right hand side, 16 uh, times 2 to the power of n minus 1. What's your thought? n. Okay. So that's a general formula that is given to me. You want to use manipulation? You want to use manipulation? Okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. How are we going to manipulate that one? Uh, you again probably going to look at pattern, I believe. Okay, let's take, so that is a function that is given. Now if I take n equal to 1, that means f of a plus 1 equal to 16 times 2, 2 to the power of 1 minus 1. Correct, right? That makes sense. That looks good. That looks good. That's correct. If n equal to 2, then that becomes f of a plus 1 plus f of a plus 2 equal to 16 to the power, 16 times 2 to the power of 2 minus 1. f of n equal to 3, f of a plus 1 plus f of a plus 2 plus f of a plus 3 equal to 16 to the power of 2 cube minus 1. And you are telling me that you will just use this particular specific value. Now oh, that is interesting because if it is true for any value of n, the value of a is kind of, does it, it's not changing, right? So I, I think one of the question is very obvious that whatever be the value of n, the a should be the same. Otherwise this question will not make any sense at all. So let's take a specific case that f of a plus 1 equal to 16 times 2 to the power of 1 minus 1. That, that will be 6 f of a plus 1 is 16 because 2 to the power of 1 is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1. Now f of a plus 1 equal to 16, we already got the pattern there I believe, f of 4 equal to 16, alright great, f of a plus 1 equal to 16, so a plus 1 equal to 4 and a equal to 3, awesome, awesome, this took a while, this took a while, but I believe that the way in which you solve the question was to look at the same process. Hmm. So problem solving is this process wherein you're trying to look at one of these eight ways to approach a particular question. But you have to develop this skill. Now, how do you develop this skill? Two things. One, while solving, try and apply this process. Yes, that's a simple thing to do. Number two, once you tried solving a question, check if there are other ways you could have approached the question. And do this for every question. And keep doing this and you will develop the skill. 
and more is to come later and I will I will close this video here and if you need more questions to be discussed like this I'll be more than happy to do so let me know in the comment box thank you and all the best for your preparation bye